Whenever anybody, a uh, local politician, tells me they're going to cut my taxes, the first question back I have to them is, what service are you going to cut? The services aren't there now. To cut more, I mean, why don't you just tell every child or anyone who has a disability, hey, you're on your own. The students I have in my classroom, I'm to teach them how to take public transportation. There's no money. How do I get them on the bus? So I can't teach them public transportation. I'm going to teach some life skills. Let's go shopping. There's no money. How do we get there? We can't do it. There's no programming. I was always told I was going to receive the service. I never once thought that I would be out of pocket or that I would even, you know, my husband and I will do anything for our son just like anybody would do for their children. We always thought the service would eventually come. So we were going to do what we could until it came. And then when we're told, I'm sorry, your, your son's now too old for this, um, we are now discharging him from the program, he will not be receiving any speech therapy or any therapy from our end, you must go ahead and, and do it privately. And without these services, you, these children sometimes don't have a chance. Well, the one gentleman in my class, he decided he would become a crypt and sell drugs and make money. So initiation was to get beat up by the people that now he's going to befriend and then rob a store at gunpoint. So now he's dealing with probation in the courts. Um, legal aid has been reprimanded or remanded the last four times. So where's the money for all that? Um, they're looking at custody. Had he got care in the first place, we wouldn't have custody. We wouldn't have the courts. Uh, the Police officer in Sudbury, Joe McDonald, who was killed back in 1992, was killed by a parolee who was released who should never have been in the community. Now, this simple-minded, knee-jerk austerity approach, which says we've got a deficit, therefore we've got to cut spending, it can really backfire. And we've already seen this happen in Europe. We've seen it happen in Greece and other countries where the more they cut, the worse the recession becomes, the worse the recession becomes, the worse the deficit becomes. So the cutting is actually self-defeating. We could face a similar situation in Ontario if they try to cut back public service programs and other uh, government spending too dramatically to try and balance their budget. And, and so I think it comes, becomes now it becomes an issue of tax fairness. And we certainly don't have this in the, the, that in this province or in this country. And, and, and we, see, we see, you know, uh, in, in Ottawa, we see Tony Clement talking about all the cuts he's going to make in, in public services in Ottawa. And they're going to download those costs onto the provinces as they're doing or about to do with health care. And the province is going to turn around and do exactly what Mike Harris done, and he's going to download it onto municipalities. And at the end of the day, there's only the one taxpayer, which is, which is us. And the result is more victims in the communities and more social costs for everyone. So finally, Don Drummond, wake up, smell the coffee. These kind of cuts are counterintuitive to what, what uh, this province needs. When I first started with the OPS 25 years ago, it was the Ministry of Revenue, it's changed finance revenue back and forth. We had one Assistant Deputy Minister for Revenue. Today, we have six Assistant Deputy Ministers. The employer says they want to cut. Maybe Mr. Drummond should look at that.